Um, I'm glad of the things that have happened to me and a lot of the opportunities I've had are potentially through, you know, because of my injury. Um, so it'll be interesting to do the sliding doors thing and be able to go back and see what I was doing yeah. right now if my injury hadn't have happened. But I don't think I'd necessarily swap it if, you know, I, I'm quite happy with life as it is at the moment. I think life's Yeah, good that's I, that's interesting thing again, like I talk to people and they say, like, I wouldn't necessarily change my situation because mm-hmm. I'm happy where I am. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know what's on that the other side of that sliding yeah. door. So, yeah. you know, it could be worse off and it's I think it's quite an interesting like well, an important thing to like just like just because your life is different doesn't mean it's worse. Like mm. it, you know, it's just different. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was a really good opportunity for me because the the sort of system most people follow into is that you know you do your, your education and then you know if you're academically minded you might go on and do A levels and then do a degree and then you do more study or you go and get a job or whatever it comes a sort of like conveyor belt of one thing to the next thing um, and I really think the thing about having a big drastic thing happen in your life like a spinal injury. Is that you get to take a step back from that conveyor belt essentially, yeah. uh, and think actually, what do I what do I want in from life? What do I enjoy in life? What do I want to do in the future? Um, and it's like a real, you know, you withdraw yourself from the rest of the community for a while, and in that conveyor belt, and then you go, okay, what what do I want to? What's important? Yeah, um, it makes you appreciate things a little bit more yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. and I. You know, I did a. I've done loads of travelling. I, I backpacked around the world a number of times. You know, um, with friends and things after my injury, uh, and that is the sort of thing I probably wouldn't have ended up doing. Had I just gone straight into a, a, a job, you know, and had a family and got settled down somewhere, um, in just that sort of thing of being able to say, okay, I'm going to do some travelling. I'm going to do some disability sport. I'm going to set up my own company. You know, all these things that you have. A chance to sort of step a bit back from to get the headspace to think okay this is what I, this is what I fancy doing and let's have a go at doing that so what was the disability tra- like traveling with a disability backpacking that's not something you normally hear from someone like I'm a quadriplegic let's go backpacking <laughs> yeah. yeah well uh, yeah it's an element of hard but it was probably one of the best times of my life you know you, it was about three years after I finished my degree um, and me and my best mate uh we decided to get some money together and we went traveling around the world for nine months. So we did, we started off in sort of Southeast Asia and traveled around that area for quite a bit and then went to Australia, New Zealand, Pacific Islands. And then we met another friend uh, in Van- in Vancouver, bought a camper van and then drove around the whole of North America for three months in nice. a camper van together and then That's sold cool. it in Toronto. Um, but yeah, it's, it's elements of traveling in a wheelchair is, is difficult. Can imagine. Um, I was, like I say, and I was fortunate I can do a few steps on my crutches and that made a massive difference when you're trying to, you know, get on and off a, a boat in Thailand to go out to one of some of the islands and stuff yeah. like that. That's That makes a big difference. But particularly in Southeast Asia, people are just so willing to help. And, you know, when you're with backpackers, they're all willing to help, the locals are willing to help. And even if you have to sort of pay for assistance in certain areas, it's not, Particularly expensive. Yeah, um, it's it's because I feel like we're very privileged in this country. With a lot, so a lot of people complain about accessibility, but then when yeah, you go yeah. abroad, like even to like other countries that are you know like Western civilization and stuff, yeah. we're very lucky here with what we've got. Yeah, I mean, you're, when you're in a country that has flash floods, you know, like in Thailand that just chucks it down at certain times of the day in the rainy season, and so that the curbs don't away over the rivers don't overflow they have like huge curbs and then the drains fill up the roads quite often yeah. so you you know you've got like a you know 10 inch curb to try and get up with no drop curbs and stuff like that yeah. so, um, it, it's hard work but and, you know a lot of the paths that you try and push on aren't the same as we'd expect here yeah, it's only stuck and there's only a tree yeah <laughs> so. but on the same side because of that the the drivers are used to basically seeing people you know, pushing carts to try and sell their wares in the road, mm. you know, there's pedestrians and the road, there's dogs and stuff, and um, people are used to that as well, so, whereas you you might not be pushing down a path, you know, in a, in a town, 
you'd be pushing down the road, but people are looking out for you as well. And yeah, um, you just have to make do. Really, it's hard sometimes trying to find places to stay that are accessible. Yeah, and, I, um, that's what we find with the accessibility stuff. Like I know yeah. what I need. Yeah, but they might not have have a disability room, but it might be suitable. Yeah, because I know what I need. Like I know yeah. exactly what I need the bathroom to be like. And yeah. all that stuff. It's, yeah. So when we've been away I was like can you just send me pictures just yeah. go in the room take a picture and email it to me so I can tell you if it's okay or not yeah yeah that's not it's probably a little bit more doable now even in sort of Southeast Asia but um, mm. you know when I first travelled it was you know you, you turn up on a tuk tuk and you have to sort of find some accommodation and then I'd send my mate in just, just to literally have a look at it yeah you know see if are we going to be able to manage this are we not going to be able to manage this and then you'd have to go to another place if you couldn't manage it but um after a while you get you know fairly efficient at, at doing that and, yeah um accommodation is is fairly cheap so if you need to spend a bit more one night because you can't stay in the place that costs you you know one pound fifty a night then you can stay somewhere that costs you two pound fifty a night <laughs> uh if it's a bit more accessible yeah so yeah uh, like do you feel like there's um with the traveling and that is there anything that um you'd like recommend for people to if they wanted to do something similar like just say, sort of go for it and find out what happens or yeah i mean i was very green when we first started my i i went away post injury the first time with uh, a group of wheelchair rugby lads who went on a, um, a little trip down to florida to play in a rugby tournament and that was my first time you know flying and traveling post injury um and i thought yeah i can i can give this a go and i've always you know i didn't really do anything travel wise before going away for nine months you know, nine months backpacking is, you know, it's a big trip, you know, um, and we, I couldn't really carry a rucksack very well, so I had a day bag, and then my mate carried a massive rucksack between the two of us, which had all of our clothes between the two of us, and, um, and I had to, like, send medical equipment out to a couple of places, you know, around the, on the trip to just make sure I had enough to keep going. Yeah. Um, and you have to sort of, you just have to compromise a bit, so, you know, with your medical stuff you might have to reuse stuff you know you, you don't take as many clothes as you want and you have to wash them more regularly and yeah. all these things you just have to um, work out ways that you can economise um, without it affecting your you know your health and stuff or, or whatever you know the ability to carry the amount of stuff you need but um, you get used to it after you know the, the, the first couple of weeks we were experimenting and finding new ways to do things and just after a while you you work out what works for you yeah um and i've yeah like i said it's one of the best times of my life really that's cool yeah it's like it's quite interesting because i don't, like you're the only person i know that's done that sort of thing in mm. the situation so it's quite a unique perspective to get on it all really yeah yeah it's i i do love the the cheaper side of backpacking you know that doing it in rather than hotels doing it in hostels and stuff the way yeah. you stay is um, it's a really nice way to do it and it, give, it does give you loads of confidence because you know that once you can do that if you've been in some situations that are a bit difficult then you work out ways to, to do things and I've travelled on my own now I've travelled on my own in Thailand Dubai Japan you know a few Bangladesh I went to work as a volunteer in Bangladesh for a while uh, and this is all travelling on my own um, and it gives you that confidence that you know that people will always help you out yeah. if you get really stuck um, and that you will you know there will be some difficult situations but you generally can find a way to, to overcome them yeah it's all about putting yourself in those situations that really challenges you and yeah. find out what you can and can't do yeah. and that's I feel like that's a better life experience than going you know you did your physio and that you probably mm -hmm. learnt more from a week doing yeah. by yourself in Thailand than you ever did like yeah. doing a physio or that or. yeah and there's something just confidence boosting about feeling confident enough to travel on your own or to travel with a yeah. friend and, yeah, and learning um, how to like communicate with people yeah. and you know yeah yeah. even when you've got no communication you you can always kind of work out how to be understood most of the time we had one situation lots of when pointing was, was <laughs> lots of pointing yeah things. There's one bit in Indonesia when I actually even managed to lose my wheelchair. So we'd gone down to this um, this waterfall. Me and my mate, we, we ended up buying, a, no, hiring a little car in, in Bali. 
and we drove down to, the, to this waterfall um, and we wanted to go for a swim in the waterfall so um, we were just, just the two of us on our own um, and we ended up going down like this sort of dirt path down the hill to get from the place we parked the car down to the waterfall um, and then on the way back up um, it was getting dark as well and uh, we were going back up this hill and it was so steep that you couldn't, my mate couldn't even push me really so we had to go back to the car get me sticks and I had to sort of just take really really slow steps um, you know just to try and get back up this dirt path and it was really hard work and at one point he came to sort of help me behind and then my wheelchair was just left on the side and it just went and fell and it just like tumbled off the edge of this sort of dirt track down through this undergrowth down and down downhill and we just couldn't see it we must have you know it's well out of sight um and we were just like well it's getting dark you know we have to get back to the car somehow i don't know how we're going to get this and we had to go back to our accommodation uh, and i had to make it up to the car in the sticks um and then come back the next day and try and work out how we were going to recover this random wheelchair we worked out the we found out the indonesian word for wheelchair and then we went around and sort of talked to all the locals and some random locals had found it from a village at the bottom of this hill without a person in it i was like how on earth has this got here um and we had we had ended up having to pay them like a little bit of a finder's fee essentially <laughs> to get it back but it was it was well worth it but i had a whole night where i was just you know i was like what am i going to do i've got no wheelchair how, how am i going to do the rest of these travels you know i might be able to do a little short distance on sticks but i can't carry that on for the you know for the future um yeah it was it, getting some interesting scrapes like that and uh, but just finding your way out of them is is yeah kind of character building and stuff yeah definitely like yeah that's when you find out who you really are yeah and you, how, how resourceful you can be like you know when you something breaks on your chair I think I had a, a cast to fall off at one point and then you sort of find bike shots from mechanics places and people will always be able to find a you know a way to fix something or you know you, if you look a bit outside the box there's always ways to to get around problems yeah that's, that's quite cool I bet there's uh, lots of experiences that you've learned there that yeah that's quite interesting yeah and i think it, yeah once you start doing that sort of stuff it, it, it's great for knowing that you can overcome those situations yeah that's good <laughs>